NFL News and Notes. John McMullen here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Our NFL News and Notes brought to you by BMW of Atlantic City. The ultimate driving experience is closer than you think at BMW of Atlantic City. Minutes from exit 37 on the Parkway online at BMWAtlanticCity.com. John McMullen takes a stroll with us down the NFL News and Notes. And a lot going on here, John, as we get ready for the NFL draft in just a couple of key weeks here now. And, uh, you know, I, I will ask you, covering a lot of games, is there a game that stands out that you've covered uh, that uh, was like a historical game or some sort of big game that you kind of that, – that's at the top of your list? Well, I was at that Sixers game as well, the one you were just speaking about, which I guess the most surprising thing about that is Andre Iguodala making free throws, keys free throws down the stretch. But That's right. Uh, now, I've been – I've covered – I think seven Super Bowls now. I think four or five NBA Finals. So when I when I look at the stakes and I look at the at the enormity of it all, uh, the Malcolm Butler game stands out to me. Uh, you know, clinching the Super Bowl by jumping a route, uh, basically on fourth and one with the game on the line. So I, I don't think it ever gets any bigger than that. Uh, and I don't know if it is ever going to get any bigger than that. You know, Super Bowl, I mean, I don't know that there is an event in sports right now that is bigger or has become bigger than what the Super Bowl really is, right? I mean, that is kind of the... uh, I've never been. You've never been? No, I've never actually been to a Super Bowl. The one year I had the opportunity to go, I graciously gave my passes over to uh, our former Eagles uh, guy, uh, Ryan Messick at the time. He was covering the Eagles for us, and I said, you can go to the game. That was the Jacksonville one? No, that was the game in New York, uh, oh, right oh, up here. Oh, right. Yeah. So uh, if the game comes back to New York, John, I'll let you have those passes. You can have them. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, I, I should say. That, I was at that Super Bowl as well. That one wasn't quite as good. <laughs> I should say, stadium. what I should say is, John, if the game is back in New York, you're going to get screwed on the passes since I didn't get to go the last time. Yeah, but I, you know where the, me- the media day for that one was in Newark. The media day was terrible. Well, we did our shows on Radio Row. Oh, that week. So we were up there the whole week long doing our shows from uh, from New York City. And I said, you know what? We're going to be up there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm not going to want to stick around to go to this game on Sunday. So I said, Messick, you can have the passes to go to the game since I'm not going to want to hang up here all weekend. So, yeah, John, you're screwed next time. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, going to the Super Bowl, because I remember that Super Bowl specifically, I actually – you know, obviously I live in South Jersey. I actually took the train. One of the few smart decisions I've ever made in my life. I took the train into New York city to take the media shuttle back to MetLife stadium, rather than just try to go straight to MetLife stadium, because the stories after the game were horrific uh, about people trying to get in and get out on, on public transportation. So that's one of the few good decisions I've ever made. All right. Uh, John McMullen, of course, 97.3 ESPN.com covers the Eagles. FanRag Sports NFL covers the NFL at JF McMullen on Twitter. Uh, let's look at some Eagles news and notes here as uh, so many – we're getting close to the draft here. And let me ask you this. Your gut feeling on which direction – are they in a spot now, John, where best player available is really the direction that they go? Well, I think that's what everyone talks about and everyone preaches, but I think it's a lot of you-know-what many times, not just from the Eagles, but every team in the NFL. I think a clear way of saying best player available is best player available at the positions we need. Because obviously, if the best player on the board – To give you an example, at number 14, the Philadelphia is a quarterback. They're not taking a quarterback, so they're not taking the best player on their board. Uh, Which some people people think they did when they ended up making the trade-up for Matt Barkley, that he was the highest guy by far on their draft board, so high up that they traded up to go get him. Well, yeah, that, you know, as it gets later in the draft, and you're talking about a fourth-round pick, uh, Matt Barkley, they traded up to get that first choice of the day. Yeah, it, you're more likely to take the best player regardless of position because there's 
obviously your hit factor as you get later in the draft is is very shaky, and you're just trying to get a player that develops into an NFL starter no matter where it might be. But when you're talking about the first round, even the second round, uh, in the third round, premium picks as they're regarded in the NFL, that that best player available mantra, again, it's best player available at need positions because you can't afford to just ignore – uh, the 14th overall pick, if there's a corner there, if there's a running back, if there's a wide receiver, uh, if there's an edge pass rusher. Again, you can't afford to take a quarterback, even if you think the quarterback is better, because you have Carson Wentz, and right. he's going to be the long-term answer. It's just it's just common sense. So will the Eagles take the best player available at a need position? Yes, I think they will. Um, what are those – rank your need positions. I guess corner's definitely number one, but what's the next? Because it seemed that wide receiver was constantly in that conversation. Where does that rank on the list now? It's still on the list because uh, I think you need multiple bodies, and I'm not very high on Torrey Smith, not as high as other people. Uh, certainly all Sean Jeffrey, but they only signed him to a one-year deal. I think they'll be able to get something done long-term after the season. So he's situated, and I still think you need to add talent. So it's in there. It's no longer uh, dueling with cornerback for the top need. Cornerback by far is the Eagles' top need. And from there, I would probably say running back is number two. I would say edge rusher is number three. And and put wide receiver is probably 3A. So those are the four positions uh, I think this team has to look at uh, most closely. As we're starting to get closer, um, I know we're still about two, two and a half weeks out here. Uh, give us some guys John McMullen likes at 14. If you're an Eagles fan, who are some guys that our listeners that were Eagles fans should start to zone in on a little better? Well, I think the one name I keep bringing up for a reason is Christian McCaffrey. And because I've I've listened to Howie Roseman throughout the uh, the off season and his intent, and I think it's the correct intent is to is to build up around Carson Wentz. And I think if you get in a player like that, and the reason I like him more than a Dalvin Cook, who's more of a traditional running back, is I think he can help you in so many ways. He can not only be uh, your bell cow running back. He can catch the football out of the backfield. He can even line up a, as a wide receiver uh, in the slot, even outside the numbers. There, I, I mentioned it before. There were scouts at the NFL scouting combine who told me he ran better routes than all the receivers. That's how it, it, impactful this kid is if you use him correctly. The concern would be the size. Can he can he hold up? Uh, if he's touching the football 25 times a game. And, and that's something you have to weigh. But I think he's so explosive offensively. That would be my number one choice. My number two choice got hurt, and that's Sidney Jones. I think he would have been a perfect fit for this team at cornerback. And unfortunately, he tore his Achilles at his pro day, so he's out of the equation. I, I don't think there's going to be corners Marcus Lattimore of Ohio State would be the guy you'd want, but I think you have to trade up to get him. Uh, and if you're going to sit there at 14, whether it's Gary and Conley from Ohio State, Lattimore's teammates, uh, I, I don't think they're worthy of going at that 14th selection. So uh, if you're hell-bent on getting a corner, I, I think you're better off trading down. I really do. And accumulating more assets because I don't think the value is there. Same thing in, at, at, at edge rusher. And I think that's one of the reasons the Eagles signed Chris Long uh, as sort of a Band-Aid. We constantly have that discussion, whether it's prudent to go after Band-Aids. Uh, I think it's more prudent to do that than to reach for somebody. So, uh, I, I I can't get off the name McCaffrey. He's the one guy I would want. Uh, and then you have to talk about if guys drop, if O.J. Howard would, would drop. I, I don't think he would, but you'd have to seriously consider taking him, even though it's not a need position. 
John, I know that we always talk about Howie and he's probably going to make a trade at some point, but in this draft, what's more likely a move? A move up for a guy like Lattimore or a move down like you just talked about? I think a move down is more likely. Um, a year after moving up and giving up so much uh, as far as assets, and they've done a good job uh, of getting some of them back, getting back in the first round, most notably with the Sam Bradford trade. But I don't think they want to sort of, now that they have the future, there's no need to mortgage the future. The future is Carson Wentz. The future is building around them. Uh, and the one guy I think you would look at, to move up for is Lattimore and as good as he is. And I wouldn't say uh, I'm, I'm not criticizing him as a player. Uh, he's a cornerback. You're not building up around Carson Wentz. Now, granted you are in the fact that you'd have a better defense, which would make things easier for the offense. So everything fits into the, the puzzle, so to speak, but how he was talking about building up around him offensively with with talent, whether it be at running back, wide receiver, offensive line. And I think that's more the mentality of this team. Yeah, you know, um, the, the point that Pete brings up about trading up for a guy like Lattimore, do you think it's worth moving up for him? Is he that good, in your opinion, that it would be worth moving up for a guy like Lattimore? Yeah, I mean, I, I, as a player, he deserves his stock. He deserves his status of where he is, and he's got a chance to be a, a, a tremendous player, and he's not going to be there at 14. That's the bottom line. So if you do like him that much, uh, that's the only way you can get him is, is to move up. I, I just look at where this team is and what they've claimed they're trying to do, and I, I don't think – trading up for a defensive player fits into that. I could be wrong, but it just it, it just doesn't make sense uh, uh, for what they want to do in building up around Carson Wentz because I, I, I don't think Torrey Smith is, is a long-term fit at wide receiver. Uh, I, I don't think Nelson Aguilar is going to turn it around magically in his third NFL season. Uh, I think the underreported part of this is I, I don't think this coaching staff is very high on Jordan Matthews. And there's no way they want to go into the 2017 season with Wendell Smallwood as the starting running back. So there has to be still significant talent added at the skill positions of this football team. John, is he that much better than maybe the second best guy, though? Are you talking about Lattimore? Yes. Yeah, he is. He he is. Um, and I think that second best guy would have been Jones, if not for the injury. And, and that's where the problem comes in. If you want to fall back and take Conley, for instance, at 20, I, I'm all for it. I think that would be a great choice at 20. At 14, I, I don't think it's a great choice. And that's where I think falling back, if you're intent, on getting a corner, and I, I don't know if that, I don't think that's a bad idea. I just don't think you could possibly take one at 14 that's not named Lattimore, and he's not going to be there. Conley going to be there at 14, do you think? I've seen him in some mock drafts sitting there for the Eagles. Yeah, unquestionably. That's the point. Yeah, he's definitely going to be there. So if they want him, uh, they could get him at 14, but that's the problem. He doesn't belong at 14. He doesn't belong at 14, for, not for a good reason, for a bad reason. So that's too uh, that's too high for him is what you're saying. Exactly. He should be in the 20 to 32 range. Maybe even, you know, some scouts have him as a high second round pick. So to sit there and reach uh, for a need like that, we talk about best player available at need position. Uh, he might be the best cornerback available, but it's very unlikely he's going to be the best player uh, at a need position for the Eagles. Yeah, that's that. You know, he's an interesting one because when I saw, I think it was uh, Kuiper had him at fourteen to the Eagles. I thought Conley at fourteen was a little high for for my likings anyway, and it sounds like you agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, 
early in the process, he wasn't even considered a, a first round pick. He's interesting and though because he sort of, of Lattimore playing on the other side, and that he got a lot of action. So he would be a guy coming into the league that is at least used to having action his way. He's not one of these guys that was a shutdown and didn't get anything thrown his way because he had the shutdown on the other side of him. Yeah, and, you know, it could work out. I, I wouldn't be the first guy in the world you sort of reach for and take before he probably should go, uh, and he still turns into a to a really good player. But I think if you're sitting there at 14, I, I think you got to do – uh, your due diligence, you have to look at everybody. You can't get tunnel vision because you have such a need at cornerback and, and, and stop looking at the other players. Uh, I think if the Eagles do that, that's that's a grave mistake. That's the kind of thing bad teams do. John, some mount drafts have the Eagles picking McCaffrey first round, Jordan Lewis of Michigan second round, wide receiver Chad Hansen of Cal in the third round. Does that kind of fit with what you think the Eagles should do? Would you be okay with that mock kind of draft? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I'll tell you what. If their draft starts with McCaffrey, I'm going to give him an A right off the bat. I, I think he's the best offensive player in this draft. Uh, I think he's explosive athletically. I, I think he's unique in, in an era uh, where people are now utilizing unique players better. Uh, and a, a, as I said, you can move them all over the football field. Doug Peterson likes to use different formations uh, to mask his intent on particular plays. So I think he's a perfect fit. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't concerns. As I said, there are you know, he's not the most powerful runner in the world. Uh, he's not the biggest guy in the world. Uh, but if you look at what he did at the combine, at, at it, he's so explosive uh, athletically. Uh, I, I, I just – he's the kind of matchup nightmare. You look at it as opposing defensive coordinator and you go, what the heck am I going to do with this guy? The linebackers can't cover him. Corners can't cover him. Uh, because they can't tackle them. They're not physical enough. Uh, if the Eagles get a kid like that and they use them properly, it, it's going to be really, really fun uh, around Philadelphia Eagles football. Yeah, and, and he's the kind of guy that coupled with Wentz that uh, they, they seem like they would form a pretty dynamic duo there. That, that seems like a good foundation of your offense, akin to a McNabb and Westbrook type of duo. Yeah, it, it, that's exactly the type of situation. Very similar player, although, you know, and, and again, you, you hesitate because everybody compares, you know, young kids to, to future, hall, not future, but actual Hall of Famers. I saw somebody uh, compare Hooker, uh, the safety from Ohio State, to Ed Reed today. It's like pump the brakes. But if you look at what the skill set uh, of Christian McCaffrey. It's very similar uh, to Brian Westbrook and the fact that he can do so many different things, including, by the way, kickoff returns and punt return, if you want to overuse them to a ludicrous degree. Uh, but even, even for Westbrook, as good as Westbrook was, this kid is worlds above him as far as running routes and as far as the receiving aspect of it. So, there's a potential to have a really, really superstar player that drops to 14 because some people are concerned over his size. Uh, uh, and I think, I, I think if he's there, I, I think the Eagles should jump. Uh, I want to ask you about Derek Barnett real fast. Tennessee defensive end, he, he seemingly would be a guy around there. Would you be happy with him at 14? No, he's another guy. He's the edge rusher, and I'd be happy at 20. Same thing with, with, with Conley uh, or somebody like that, but I wouldn't be happy at 14. Uh, I look at, at, at Barnett. I don't see the explosion off the edge. This, this is a draft that's very deep at corner. Uh, it's very deep at running back. It's not very deep uh, when you're talking about edge rushers. Uh, and other than Miles Garrett, obviously he's probably going to be number one overall. Uh, th that's the second best kid, but I, I look at him and I, I see a six or seven sack guy, not a 13 or 14. And if you're picking a, an edge rusher at 14 overall, you, you want a double-digit sack guy. 
Uh, draft is coming. We're getting close. We start to feel it now. Cornerback, maybe running back. Uh, another spot, as John mentioned, McCaffrey, who's kind of a hybrid running back, wide out, defensive end. Uh, we'll see uh, which direction they go. We'll get more insight on it as we get closer with John McMullen from 97.3 ESPN.com. FanRag Sports NFL at JF McMullen on Twitter. John, take care, pal. Hey, thank you. Enjoy the weather, guys.